So what is the role of JavaScript in learning service now? So we have seen from Aspen, right? But this is yeah. Vancouver. So how you, uh, means how you evaluate the contribution of JavaScript when somebody is looking to learn service now, now? So great question. Uh, I'm gonna answer this in two parts because the first part is whenever we introduce some new technology, it's, it's a little more techy. I remember when UI Builder came out, we were editing a lot of fields as JSON. Uh, if you go way, way back, we didn't have like condition builder built into notifications, a condition builder built into business rules for that matter. A lot of things was a lot of things were scripted and we observe what the customer patterns are for how they're solving problems. And then we can build low or no code capabilities onto that. So okay. that brings up the second piece that we didn't we, we didn't take the coding capabilities away. Again, I'm going to default to one of our favorite examples, business rules. Okay. You can still check that advanced button and write a script in there if you need more advanced capabilities because a simple condition and set fields isn't doing it for me. I need to go look up additional records. At that point, I'd go, maybe I should be using Flow Designer. Uh, but you know, the, the scripting capabilities are already there. Okay. Did that answer your question or did you want to get a little deeper into the functions and, and you know, hierarchy of how things should be built? No, well, I think uh, this should be fine. Right? I just wanted to know like uh, uh, the time when we have learned uh, JavaScript and the time mm -hmm. right now. So how much extra we need to learn in JavaScript? That is also a kind of, you know, follow-up question for that. I would because say it's that a time, very... uh, it's, uh, you know, we used to learn like the document dot get ID and all such uh, basic stuff. But right now, yeah. with respect to JavaScript and UI, things are way, you know, deeper and way beyond. So how uh, the person who want to do web development can start with respect to JavaScript? Yeah, if, if you're a traditional full stack developer, you've been doing web development on other platforms, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve to learn the scripting APIs. Okay. We all had to learn GS dot, you know, add info message right. to put a message right. at the top of the screen. There's, there's those classes and methods that we, we needed to get familiar with. Uh, you don't do a SQL query, you do a glide record or a glide record secure or glide query you know, to interact with the database. So it's a very powerful tool. Do you need it to get started as a ServiceNow developer? No. Is it okay. a way to level up your game? Yes, because now you can take on more complex solutions that somebody without those coding capabilities. Recognizing that anytime you write code, it's not just about getting to the solution, it's thinking about how that solution will be maintained and updated and supported in the future. That's where the big cost, that's where the big risk, that's where the big technical debt may come from. If you're okay. wise and you architect it properly, you can get away from a lot of that stuff. Like, let's use a property, a, a system property, rather than some magic society that's hard coded into my script in a script include that nobody understands. You could do this possibly in a flow and eliminate the script entirely. I did that about a year ago, taking about 600, co 600 lines of script include code and crushing it down to a flow, a subflow, and a decision table. Okay. My future okay. self is going to thank me for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 